Uh, easiest question. Let me have you say and spell your first and last name. Okay, so my first name, Gage Gubrud. Uh, first name spelled G-A-G-E. Um, and then last name, Goob Rude, pronounced Goob and then Rude. Um, G-U-B-R-U-D. Dude, I bet people mess up your name all the time. Yeah. You just get used to it or how do you deal with that? Uh, yeah, no, I'm used to it. Um, it so when I was a kid, it was more my last name and people still mess it up, but you're just, that, that's the part I'm really used to. Yeah. But the most recent one is like people call me Gabe all the time or sometimes Cage. <laughs> it's either Cage or Gabe and I'm like, I don't mind Cage, because I think that's kind of a cool name. Yeah. I wouldn't be my name in Cage, but I don't like Gabe as much. So I'm just like, no, it's Gage, not Gabe, Gage. And it's like, people come up to me, Gabe. I'm like, no, Gage. <laughs> I know, but, like, when, when people ask me my name, like, after a while, I just give up. I'm like, yeah. Yeah, whatever. yeah. I, I can see that. But, it, I mean, it doesn't it doesn't bug me, but it's just kind of one of those things where, the first name at least, you don't. I don't like the first name mess-ups as much. But it's not that big of a deal. Um, let's, let's just start with where we're at. Um, can you just describe what it was like for you growing up in McMinnville for like people that have never been out here? How would you describe this area? Farmland. I'll tell you that a lot of people do outdoors activities and not, not everybody. I mean, it's more, more, uh, city like than you would think, especially now it's grown a ton since I've been to college even and all that. But, um, just a lot of farm life. I mean, I, I grew up fishing and hunting my whole life, um, partly because the area I'm in and partly just because uh, that's what my dad grew up doing. But there's just a lot of trees, a lot of area to go out and do that kind of stuff, go on hikes and uh, explore kind of the outdoors and stuff like that. So that's, and, and even in elementary school that our teachers and stuff, we'd go on field trips just to Rainbow, Rainbow Lodge out here, which is 15 minutes away and go fishing and stuff like that. So that's the kind of thing that you grew up doing where I don't think you go on field trips to go fishing when you go to a metro Portland school, you know. <laughs> yeah. So um, it's it's a really nice area. Not a huge town, not a small town necessarily either. It's just kind of right in between. Uh, love growing up here. So when people ask you, you know, what's your hometown like? What's kind of the general answer that, that you give folks? Uh, I, I say it's... Well, when, I, when Pullman, it's like, they go, "What's how big is McMinnville? I was like, it's literally the same size as Pullman. Like, I think they're both they're both in the 33,000 population. When you go into town in Pullman, it says 33,000 something coming to McMinnville, and it says the same thing, 33,000 some people is the population. So I just kind of tell them it's kind of a, not quite a knockoff of Portland. It's not quite close to Portland. It's kind of in between, just far enough to where you can't really consider yourself in the Portland area. But you're right there for it. So uh, I, I just kind of tell them it's a lot. It's a place where a lot of retired people go to. That, that's the biggest. Uh, the biggest thing that I that I've seen recently was a big retirement place. How has for, maybe this town or or um, even like your family? How has it shaped the person that you've become and who you are today? I mean, just um, coming from a small town, it's just kind of shaped me. I'm not. I'm not a guy who likes to go to like a big city like LA. Like every once in a while going to like LA or Vegas or something like that is a cool thing. But I could never settle down and live in a city like that, you know what I mean? It's just I've I've always, it's kind of just made it so I'm more of a I don't like traffic kind of deal because I didn't have to grow up dealing with traffic all the time. Um, so I'm always in a situation where I'm looking for an area like, okay, I, like that area looks nice because it doesn't look like it's overpopulated. Not, I'm not going to be sitting in traffic for an hour every day going to and from work, whatever I'm doing. So um, I think that's the biggest thing that has kind of shaped me. And then also just being kind of a, a humble and kind of knowing and being respectful towards people. I, that's how my family's raised me. You always respect your elders and stuff like that. And uh, and just also like remember where you came from, It's even though you go to a if you get to go on news interviews and all that kind of stuff you still grew up in McMinnville and in, in the small town and people are always going to remind you of that and you got got to remember that so how about uh playing football here what was it like in in high school when you think back to that time how would you describe playing ball out here i can well first of all we were never very good like as as far like as the teams, as McMinnville as a whole, traditionally does not is not known for our football program by any means. And I remember the classes that we had; we were much better. I think we won six games every year that I was part of the varsity program. So from my sophomore year through the senior year, we went six and five, I think, or something like that, every single year. Um, but it, it's just it's a place where 
I mean, people care. I mean, people do care about football in McMinnville, and you see it, see it, and especially when you start winning a little bit and stuff like that, win a couple of games, you start seeing more people showing up to the games. So um, it was a great experience playing here, great coaches and stuff like that, people that really care about you, not just as a football player, but as a kid, as a high school student, what you're going to do after, too. Um, and then you also you also got Limfield in here, too. So you get a lot of attention from Limfield, that's for sure, when you're playing in, in McMinnville. They know how to win, that's for sure. Yes, they do. <laughs> um, your, was there a moment or a game in high school that stands out to you when you think back to that time? Well, yes, but not in great ways sometimes. <laughs> the, the main game that sticks out to me from my high school career is when we played Forest Grove my senior year at home and we were undefeated going into the game and it was kind of our rival like we had created a rival with Forest Grove it was a game that I felt like going into the game we we should win we're the better team and we ended up losing at home and it was devastating and that's that's the main game that sticks out to me is because I just remember how devastated I was like waking up the next day like are you kidding me <laughs> we just lost that game kind of thing so I, I think that's kind of funny to think about how I go back and Think about high school, and I remember the game we lost, not yeah. the great performances and stuff. But no, there's a lot of good stuff too. I mean, we had some playoff games and stuff that were a lot of fun to play in and all that. So, what went into your decision to go to Eastern? Because you could have stayed right here and gone to Linfield instead. Mm -hmm. You bet on yourself. Yeah, um, yeah. I didn't. I didn't get much attention from uh, big schools. I mean. I don't even consider Eastern Washington a big school, but uh, like as far as like you know like the Power Five, you FBS, FCS type things, but those were they were really the only ones that gave me a chance to play, and uh, I just I just wanted to I wanted to play Division One football my whole life. I grew up watching college football, and I just looked at it and I was like that seems like a lot of fun, and I I really wanted to do it, and I thought I could do it, and uh, so I took the best opportunity I could to pursue my dreams and ended up working out pretty well. So it kind of was the this, this stepping stone. It put you in position to ultimately reach that goal. Um, it's been quite the journey to get there. What does it mean to you to reach one of those big goals that you set out to do? I mean, it's it's been awesome. And I, I mean, Eastern is, I mean, I, I bleed red and black or red and white and all that kind of stuff. I bleed Eastern. I'm, I'm going to be Eagle for life. Um, just the, the opportunity they gave me and stuff like that at, to play at the next level and the experiences I had, the friends I made while I was there was, I mean, amazing. So that's, that's where, that's where I went to college and stuff like that. And I mean, I'm super excited to be at WSU, but, um, Eastern is what gave me this opportunity. I'll, I'll never forget that and kind of talk about, don't forget where you come from. Eastern is the one that gave me this opportunity. So I'm, I'm super thankful for that. And it's been it's been a grind. It's been a long, I feel like I've been playing college football for a long time now, but uh, super excited for the upcoming year. So you, you walk on, bust your butt, you get an opportunity, and before you know it, you're starting. <laughs> and you get, to, you get to start in that first game. What was it like, the buildup before that game and uh, getting that opportunity when you knew, all right, this is my time. I'm I'm gonna get a chance to start. It was it was emotional, honestly, because I walking on Eastern. It's never easy to walk on anywhere. Um, I do believe Eastern gives walk ons a better chance than if you walk on at a Pac-12 school, mm -hmm. and you walk on at Eastern. I think you're having a better chance, and they treat you differently. I mean, you're treated just like everybody else, and there's a lot of people who are on half scholarship or walk on at Eastern who end up having a lot of success in the program. Some of my best friends. Um, that I made at Eastern were walk-ons with me and ended up being three-year starters just like I was, you know what I mean? So it's, um, it was a grind the whole time and then you go into your freshman year kind of situation and you think you have a chance to play and you, people tell you like, yeah, you, you can play, you're going to play. And you're prepping all the time and you don't play much your freshman year, you're like, oh, you're kind of disappointed again, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, but it's just kind of another mountain to climb. Like, you know, like when you first walk on at Eastern, you didn't, you almost, I almost wanted to leave because I was just so frustrated. I was just like, I, you doubt yourself sometimes. And being a young kid, you're not mature enough and 
sometimes your parents need to push you and that's what they did. They pushed me to stay there. You go into your first year and you have some success in spring ball and stuff and people are telling you good things. And then you go back down the mountain on don't play much in the, in the game that you want to play in when we played at Oregon my freshman year. And then going into uh, that whole season, you think every game you kind of think, okay, I could this could be my chance to play. And you just keep getting let down. You're not playing. You're not playing. And the season you play a little bit. And all of a sudden, you go into that spring ball, going into your sophomore season, and you play really well. And pretty soon you start to realize going into the summer and then halfway through fall camp, like, okay, I'm, I'm the guy. I'm starting now. I'm going to be the starter. And then you kind of – and then you get – the day before the game, you're like, okay, I'm about to play at Washington State. This is going to be, I'm starting in the Pac-12 State, and this is my dream, my whole life kind of thing. And I, no one would ever say I was going to do it after being a walk-on at an FCS school, and all of a sudden I'm going to be a starting quarterback in a Pac-12 football game. And I was, it kind of hit me the night before. I was like, wow, I'm really, this is what I, this is literally what I've dreamed of my whole life. And, and not only do you live that dream but you light it up. Yeah. What was that experience like for you? Surreal. I'm pretty sure that's what I said after the game, too. In the post, they asked me, like, what? They kind of asked the same question. I just told them, like, it's surreal, man. Like, I I can't believe that just happened. Like, and the guys around me, obviously, and we knew, East, like, as a team, we knew what we were capable of going in that game, and no one else really did. Um, but just kind of, like, after the game, thinking about the performance and people come up to you and, Telling us if you look at your phone and you have all these text messages and all these notifications on Twitter and Instagram and people just like, who is this kid? What's going on? And you're like, this is better than I expected. I was like, are you kidding me? It's like pretty unbelievable. And uh, and then you just, you just felt, uh, I mean, probably one of the best feelings I've ever felt in my life was after that game. In that game, had the most fun I've ever had in playing football, maybe even in my life, was during that game just because of the the situation being the first start ever, first um, the ability to be playing in a Pac-12 game and playing really well and winning the game and actually beating them and on national television kind of thing. It was kind of, I mean, just the only word to describe it for me is surreal. It's just an awesome situation. I mean, there's so much work and time and effort that went into mm -hmm. to that moment. Yep. Um, so, I mean, I can feel it when yeah. you describe it, yeah. how how that could change someone's life yeah. to have a moment like that. Absolutely does, but you know, you gotta keep it in perspective sometimes because I, I mean, I got, I, you can get humbled pretty quick and that's what, I've, that's what I realized because I think, I'm pretty sure we played the next game, we played North Coast State and lost. I mean, North Coast State's a great program mm -hmm. in overtime. And then we played Northern Iowa the week after that and I got benched at halftime mm -hmm. because I wasn't playing well. I was just like, and, uh, and I thought, you know, you get right back down the mountain again. You're like, well, I just lost my starting job. I was just beat a Pac-12 team and have thrown for a thousand yards in two games, and all of a sudden I'm benched and my starting job's gone. Mm -hmm. And you're like, okay, that's it's <laughs> the way of God humbling me right there. That's don't get too high, don't get too low, kind of thing. So that's that's another thing that happened that was just pretty amazing thing. And then the rest of the season went on, and it was great, but. And just one of those things, a lesson learned where you can be at all time high and all time low within weeks, you know, maybe even days. So you go on this, you know, hell of a ride at, at, at Eastern. And, uh, you know, I think you even put on your Instagram page that, you know, just kidding. Like, I get to, <laughs> I get to do this whole senior year thing all over again. Yeah. Um, you, 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 what was that like to know I get a chance to play another year of football? It was awesome. Just another opportunity, you know. You don't. No one knows how many how many games they get to play, how long they're going to get to play for. Um, I mean, there's guys out there who have almost what the people would call guaranteed shots at the NFL or guaranteed NFL careers, and all of a sudden they're done after college because of an injury or decisions made, whatever it may be. So you really never know when your last game is going to be. So just to know that, I it kind of the feel of it is you get to redo your senior year. And not not that I regret anything I did at Eastern, but it's just kind of like you get injured and it's like, God, oh, that sucks, you know? Um, and that's that's the kind of feeling it has. Like pretty much everything after this, and that my parents and I talk about it, it's like all oh, icing on the cake right now. I've, I've had a great career and met great people and played for some great coaches and made friendships that are gonna last a lifetime. 
and now I just get to keep playing ball. And I get to go play a Pac-12 game every game now. So it's, I mean, another opportunity, another situation that if you told me I'd be last year at this time, that this would be a situation, I would say you're crazy. So uh, pretty blessed to be here for sure. I'm sure you've gotten this question a lot. Why Washington State? You know, I mean, they were the first ones to offer me. They offered me really quickly after they saw me in the portal, like the day after. Um, the morning after I got put in at, I think, like 6 o'clock at night, and then you start getting followed by some coaches from other schools and stuff, and teams are kind of reaching out to you. But then Washington State the next morning uh, messaged me and said, what's the deal, what's going on, Why, how are you? I thought you were done. I was like, no, nah, I can get a six year. And they're like, oh, wow, that's awesome. Are you interested in Washington State? And I said, heck yeah, I'm interested in anyone that wants to be interested in me. You know, I've never really been recruited by teams before either, so it was kind of a cool situation. Um, and they're like, okay, cool, we'll have Mike Leach call you. And then I was doing a workout, actually, um, get, just getting, trying to stay in shape, get back into shape after being injured for a while. And they called me during the workout. I had my phone on because I knew it would be kind of hectic. And I, they called me and like, hey, we're gonna offer you a scholarship. You want to? You, we want you to watch the state really bad. And I was like, "Jeez, that was quick!" Like it was from two hours from when they reached out to me to yeah, we want you here. Come here. And the really funny story. I don't even think I've told anyone at Washington State this. TCU had actually reached out to me earlier too, like around the same time that Washington State did. And they called. They had texted me, and the phone call. I didn't have anyone's number. And the phone call I got, the number, I thought it was, it was, I think it was a Texas number maybe, or it was like something like over there where I thought, oh, I thought I was talking to TCU when they offered me the scholarship. Yeah. I was like, oh, TCU just offered me. And I get off, I look, I'm like, wait, numbers, they're exchanging numbers on Twitter. I'm like, no, this is Washington State. Washington State gave me a scholarship. Okay, I get it now. So it was just, kind of, I didn't know any of the guys there. So it was just kind of funny. I was like, for a brief, probably two minutes, I was like, TCU just offered me, that's awesome. TCU just gave me a scholarship to go play there. And then, oh wait, no, it's Washington State. That was a different guy, <laughs> like kind of a situation. So I got a little quick mix up, which was, I thought was really funny, so. That's gotta be pretty dope to go. I mean, it took you, you know, four or five years of college ball to, to get recruited. I mean, how neat is that? Yeah, no, it, I mean, hey, not everyone's as fortunate to get recruited out of high school. I mean, it's, it's a pretty cool experience. Um, and it, I mean, I'm sure it would have been way different when I, if I was getting recruited in high school, I would have thought of it way differently and stuff like that. Just being a young 18 year old kid as opposed to a 23 year old who's starting to mature a little bit. Um, but it, it was it was a good experience. It was it was nice to you know, I mean you know feel wanted and stuff like that. Everyone wants to feel wanted. And um, but at the end of the day, I mean it's just recruiting. You got to do what's best for you, right? So. Kind of chose Washington State because they, they offered me that scholarship. Um, they were close. I was familiar with them. I really, who doesn't want to throw the ball 60 times a game as a quarterback, you know what I mean? So that's, that's another big thing. Um, and they're also a good program, on the rise. Um, had a great year last year. You see success with a grad transfer last year and all that stuff. So you think, I mean, obviously every situation is different. You don't want to think that I'm going to do the same thing that Gardner did or it's going to be just as good, whatever it is. Everyone's different. Everyone has a different effect on a team and a community. So um, I'm, I just I think it's a great situation. I think it was a great fit. Um, the guys seem to think so, too. They all have accepted me a lot there, and it's been, it's been great so far. I can't wait for camp to start and play some ball, honestly. So um, you'll always hear, like, uh, stories about – uh, recruiting videos, like even at, at the NBA, you know, they have you walking into Madison Square Garden and mm. they're playing your video up on the big board and um, they're, they're hyping you up. But I heard Washington State went a different route. What's What happened there? So it, was, it wasn't on purpose. I don't think they even realized it, but I'm on my official recruiting visit, right? And they're doing the recruiting video, the highlights of the season. And I'm on there a couple of times getting sacked because we played, we played there and that, it didn't go as well as the first time we played there. Got sacked a couple of times, got some hits and all that, and I think could do a couple of picks on there, and it was like, I just went up to, I, th I don't remember who I went up to, but I think, I think it was Dave Emmerich, and uh, just tell him, like, you know, I haven't been on a lot of recruiting visits and stuff, but from what I have been on, I don't think that the recruits are supposed to be on the bad end of the recruiting <laughs> video. Like, I was on there a couple of times getting sacked, I was like, I'm on the ground here, what's going on? Like, you guys trying to make me come here, or are you trying to drive me away? It was... <laughs> 
it was a it was a funny joke. I mean, I totally get it. No offense or anything like that taken, but it was it was just one of those kind of ironic things. Like oh, the guy that you're wanting to come here and play for you is on the opposite end of the recruiting video right now. Because you know they have film of you lighting them up. Well, right? yeah, it's somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's no, that's true. That's what they said. That was their kind of comeback. Oh, we could have showed some other stuff, and it was like, all right, whatever. That was a couple of years ago, but. Um, no, it was it was just kind of one of those funny things that I mean, it wasn't a big deal by any means. It was just kind of ironic. We, Mike Leach is such a, a polarizing guy, college football. Like everybody wants to know what he's like because the Mike Leach that that we see is just I mean, not your typical head coach. Mm -hmm. What has your experience been like with him? Um, what were kind of your first interactions with him? Was there something that stood out to you that, that made you think, oh, this dude's different? Nothing, nothing stands out to me. I mean, a lot of things stand out to me that make him think he's different. <laughs> nothing big, nothing that's like, oh yeah, that's crazy. There's, there's nothing crazy that he does besides he believes in his system and stuff like that. But the first time ever meeting him, it's like, oh, that's Mike, that's Mike Lee. He's like a celebrity. Like he's, He's friends with Donald Trump. Uh, I mean, he's kind of, you go into his office, he's got a picture of Donald Trump. He's got letters from Donald Trump. And you hear stories about Donald Trump calling his phone during a meeting and stuff like that. You're like, that's our president of the United States. And so you kind of get that celebrity feel. You're kind of like, whoa, Mike Lee's here. But then once you get to know him and you talk to him a little bit, he's just any other dude, just like everyone else, you know. And uh, he's really easy to talk to. He loves hearing new ideas. He loves talking about anything. I swear the man can talk about anything too. It's amazing. You gotta be careful sometimes or else you'll end up in a three hour conversation when you only got 30 minutes. So it's, cause he, he knows a lot of stuff. He's read a lot of books. I mean, he's written books. Um, I've actually started reading his book and stuff like that and I'm very entertained so far. Swing Your Sword. I know he's got a couple books, but I've, I've been reading Swing Your Sword a little bit and it's. I'm entertained. You can read two pages and you're like, "Whoa, wow, okay, <laughs> this guy, this guy's a little different." But um, I'm obviously very effective. He's a great, great coach, and I mean, possibly a future Hall of Famer. So, take every moment I can get with him and learn a lot. So, Gardner Minshew kind of takes a, a similar path, or there's there's some similarities between the route that you're going as well. Um, is there anything that you can take away from? what he did, have you thought about reaching out to him and asking him about his experience? Yeah, I thought about it, and I, I didn't really have to reach out to him because he was at spring ball a lot, and I, I mean, I was sidelined for spring ball, so I, I got to talk to him a little bit, and he I mean, he's a really great dude. You know, he's always asking me, like, hey, how are you feeling about the playbook? And he's always saying, like, hey, if you have any questions, ask me. Like, we're in the same situation, like you said. Um, but I think that a lot, of, a lot of us, our personalities are different. We're different guys. We're different kind of quarterbacks. We have different play styles. And it's a new year. I mean, it's, I'm not, I'm not going to be a Gardner Minshew 2.0 type thing. It's kind of like we all have our own stories and things happen differently. So, I, I mean, yeah, you ask like the little things like, oh, what, how'd you do to win the locker room or earn the guys respect kind of thing? Or how'd you, how'd you, how did you kind of compare, like, how were you feeling about the offense at this time? Did you have a hard time picking it up? I mean, it's, just, it's good to hear that kind of stuff, but at the end of the day, the way we go about things is going to be different. Just because we have different personalities, we're different guys and different stories. Um, come from a completely different places. He's from Mississippi, and I'm almost, I mean, I'm from Oregon. So it's like we're from way different kind of culture kind of areas. So uh, I think that, I mean, there's good things to take away from him and talk to him about, but at the same time, don't don't try and compare because it's we're, we're not comparable. We're just, kind of, we're, we're on our own stories. What um, what do you think will be the the toughest challenge, or or I mean, just from an adjustment, like you're you're going in, you've got to know this system, you've got to be ready to go quickly. Mm -hmm. Um, you don't have that same type type of time that you would have if you were a freshman coming yeah, up. Yeah, that's true. Um, I think that this is the system I went into is fairly simple, and also. I think having the experience of learning a system, and I did have to learn new systems as I went at Eastern because we had new coaches and stuff like that. So you have little tweaks and you gotta learn new ways of doing things um, has helped me. And just my knowledge of the game has increased a ton since I was a freshman at Eastern until now. So picking up the offense wasn't as difficult as people might think it would be. Um, it's, a, it's a fairly simple system anyway. So it's kind of one of those things where you think you go into it and you're like, oh, I gotta learn this whole new thing. But you, 
you have enough time. I mean, I only take one class at a time right now because of the program I'm in. So I have a lot of time to kind of brush up on things. And also I wasn't participating in spring ball. So I spent a lot of time watching film and uh, going through progressions. And also during spring ball, you stand by the quarterbacks that are going and you like kind of learn how they do it and see and you learn as you go. Um, but I think that I, I, don't, I don't have any worries about how difficult it'd be to learn the system. And I think the biggest difficulty is just getting used to the speed of the game every single week. Like you're, you play a Pac-12 team once a year at an FCS school like Eastern, and now we're playing Pac-12 type teams every single game, you know? So that's, that's gonna be just always, you're playing, the level of competition is gonna go up uh, per week. So just gotta, that's, that's a big adjustment that you gotta make and always make sure you're doing the right things and uh, preparing the right way. I'll ask you, uh, from uh, just being healthy and going through the challenges that go along with an injury, um, what, what was the challenge mentally behind that? and having to be patient and overcome uh, that type of challenge? Both injuries? Yeah. Um, they're a little different because the first one during the season, your senior year, and you're watching your team play without you, and you want to be out there so bad, and they, you're loving that they're having success, but you want to go and be a part of that success, you know? And even though you still are a part because you can help, you can help your court, the quarterback that is now playing be better. You can help the receivers understand the offense better. You can help people game plan, coaches game plan and stuff. But at the same time, you want to play because that's a yeah. comp that's a competitor in you. So you're you're sitting there and having success. Like I love that we're going to, we're going to play for the national title. But how bad do I want to be playing in the national title? You know, like my, myself. And it's not. It's like you feel selfish thinking about it. You know, as a player because you know you're so happy for your team and your friends. And I mean, I have a lot of my best friends are still playing. I'm super happy for them. And it's like, but I just, I want to be playing. So that, that was the biggest thing mentally is getting through that kind of stuff and feeling guilty because you feel guilty on yourself, feeling sad sometimes, even though your team's having so much success, mm -hmm. but you're, you're feeling down. Mm -hmm. And it's like, why do I feel down? We're going to play for the national title. But then it's like, anyone will tell you from the outside, like, dude, it's because you're hurt and you want to be playing. You're a competitor and that's what you want to do. Mm -hmm. So that, that's the biggest thing to get around. And then just... Uh, I think with the second injury going into it, one, it was easier because it wasn't as an invasive surgery. It was a quicker recovery time. And then two, it wasn't during the season. Um, so it wasn't like I was watching my team play on the field and stuff like that. And it's my senior year and I'm done kind of thing. It's like, okay, I, I still have my senior year. I just got a little road bump here. And then the first injury just kind of taught me that things aren't as bad as you think, you know? I mean, my goal going into my senior year at Eastern was I want to play in the NFL. I want to get drafted. I want to, I don't have to get drafted high. I want to get drafted. I want a shot to play in the NFL. That's what I want to do. And I worked for it and I felt like I could do it. And then your senior year is taken away from you like that. And you need your senior year to, I mean, put more film out there and just show that you're ready to go and uh, put yourself on the radar of NFL scouts. And that was taken away from me. And I'm just thinking I'm done. Like I, I my shot is gone. I'm probably done. I mean, I might be done playing football. I mean, probably won't get a shot in the NFL now. And then just down all the time based off that and you have negative thoughts. And then all of a sudden you end up at a Pac-12 school and you have a chance to be the starting quarterback at a Pac-12 school. And it's like, well, that changed pretty quick. I could never in a million years would I have thought that was gonna happen, but it did. Um, so that, that taught me and just, and then so the second injury came along and I was like, don't worry, it's gonna be okay. No matter if you get down, if you, Think, start putting bad thoughts in your head, it's going to be okay eventually. So that's, that's the biggest thing I learned from one injury to another and back to back like that. And that's what the second injury wasn't too bad mentally as far as getting through it and stuff because one, you could, it happened quicker. You were able to do stuff faster. And two, it was, you already gone through it once and you realize things aren't as bad as you always think. So it's, in it's interesting how like certain difficulties or challenges have kind of prepared you for the next one, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's a, an injury or just um, wanting to play well or whatever. Yep. Um, and with your story, it's so interesting because there are parallels, like there are things that, that match up that have kind of prepared you for the next moment. Right. And I've always, always thought, been a big believer in things happen for a reason and you never know why. I, I'm, I'm actually convinced that you will never know why things happen, but they all, like you could never predict what's going to happen after that. It's like, 
it's almost a thought like, well, maybe this is happening because this is going to happen. And I almost guarantee you that's not what it is. Like it's, yeah. that's kind of what I've learned from the situation. So, but you're right. It's, I mean, I've used them as learning experiences and they have, they're not always easy. Um, there's a lot of road bumps, <laughs> a lot of mountains to climb, but, uh, I mean, you learn as you go, and that's 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 the biggest things that you're learning from what happens to you in life and improving on. And that's kind of like a thing that happened with me. And I, I mean, I'm a big God guy and stuff like that. I believe in God and all that and Jesus Christ. And you look at that kind of stuff that happens, and you're like, like I said, you're you're down on yourself. But then something better comes that you could never even imagine. And it's like, wow, man, okay, <laughs> have faith because the good things are going to come from things that you think are horrible. So you just got to keep the faith and keep pushing, man, and keep doing whatever you can to better yourself as a human. Got a couple more for you, man, and then we're done. Mm -hmm. um, looking ahead at the, at the schedule now, is there a game that stands out to you or just a team that you've been looking forward to, to playing against? So... I'm always a big guy, like take it one game at a time, and I don't hold grudges on teams and stuff like that. And I'm really excited for our home opener to play in a Pac-12 stadium and have the team actually root, like the you're getting rooted for instead of rooted against in a Pac-12 stadium, because that's never happened to me. Um, but I think that the biggest game, grew up, I grew up in Oregon, family, have family relatives, grandpa and uncle both played at Oregon, University of Oregon. And uh, and I grew up a huge Duck fan, and I I think that we play at Austin, and I think that could be a really fun game. Honestly, that's kind of a situation. Not not because I have regret or not regret or I think that they should have recruited me out of high school is kind of like a revenge thing. Not nothing like that. It's yeah. more it's a homecoming. It's like oh, I got a lot of family in Eugene. I got a lot of friends that go to University of Oregon who live around this area, and it'll be um, if I'm so fortunate enough to be the starting quarterback at that point in time for Washington State, then it'd be a really fun game, just the game to come come home and play in front of all your friends that you went to high school with and your family and all that. How, how deep, like, I mean, you mentioned you were a, a Ducks fan and, mm -hmm. and um, because it was part of the family in, in a lot of ways. Yeah. Uh, I mean, like I said, my grandpa played linebacker there in the 60s, and then my uncle was part of the 94 season, 95 Rose Bowl team who had played Penn State, you know. Um, and I grew up, we had season tickets. We went to every home game. I, I mean, I could tell you, I mean, from Joey Harrington and Dennis Dixon and all the, all these quarterbacks and uh, Brady Leaf. I mean, all the, I can remember all these guys and the seasons and what was going on from up until I pretty much, I got to college. I mean, Marcus Mariota too, even he was a quarterback when I got in college. And I, I watched game film on him all the time because I think he's an amazing quarterback and I kind of like to make my game after him, kind of not, after him but just see how he does things and uh so it's it's just kind of one of those funny things i mean my room upstairs when i was growing up was painted uh green and yellow and i was i had big o's in there i was i had posters of ducks and we we're i mean we we're we we're all into it and uh i mean that that loves died off obviously because for one my sister plays volleyball at oregon state now so <laughs> little opposite and then i play in at washington state um so it, I mean, it, it'll be that'll be a fun game. And I grew up, like I said, I grew up a big Duck fan, and uh, so I know all about Austin Stadium and all that stuff. So it'll, it'll be a, that'll be a fun game to play. And uh, finally, just um, what does it mean to you to be able to represent McMinnville and and do it at at, at that level of college football? It means a lot. It really does. Um, it doesn't. Because not a lot of people have the opportunity to do this at McMinnville. For one, we're just a smaller town. We don't, we don't. I mean, I don't know that any. I don't know of any football players out of McMinnville High School to be playing at a Division One level. Um, I'm, I don't know if there actually is one or not. If I'm the first ever, or if I'm one of very few. But um, I just it's, it means it means a lot, and I feel like the support in McMinnville is a a lot because they. I mean, like I'm guy that came out of McMinnville and usually people don't do this and now they get to watch me on TV and all that kind of stuff so I think that's uh that's fun and uh it, it means a lot and you got the support system and everything like that so it's it's a it's a cool deal